50 style, the 50s cars, 50s men running the roost, and Florence Pugh there to screw it all up. I watched Don't Worry Darling, and this is Slasher Sports Cinema. They say that I have shed innocent blood. What's blood for, if not for shedding? We all go a little mad sometimes. Come on, it knows I'm here. They're coming to get you, Barbara. Sports show with Billy Graves. I just got back from the movie theater. As you see, I still got my drink. It's still cold. So we're doing this fresh. No notes. Hell with it. Let's get this going. So perfect suburban neighborhood. Okay. Every f- homes, just <laughs> the floor plans, simple, cozy homes. You know, each lawn looks like it's manicured. You know, like they've all got zero turns hidden in the garage. Uh, the, the men wake up to the smell of coffee, buttered toast, and the women kiss them, send them on their way to work before they go to their little ballet class and they're drinking by the pool. It's the American dream. And by God, we should all have it. There's definitely fuckery afoot, though. And if there wasn't, we wouldn't be watching a movie, right? So I mostly wanted to see if Florence Pugh could serve up some of that greatness she gave us in Midsummer. Her role isn't unlike Midsummer. Uh, we see in the trailers she's you know got this whole uh, you know suspicion that's aroused by her surroundings. First of which, you know, one of the neighborhood wives is having a get out moment in the middle of a party at the big boss's home. So when Harry Styles isn't, you know, having his scrambled eggs between the legs, you know what I'm saying? She's causing a stir. Um, you know, we can talk about old D- Dirty Harold here in the few. But speaking from my own experience, once I found out what was going on, I still didn't know what was going on. It, it feels like there's a reveal of this sinister plot, but upon that reveal, uh I mean, I wanted to sit there being cool, acting like I knew what was going on. I didn't know. Maybe Katie Silverman, who wrote this thing, is too smart for me. But, you know, she she and Olivia Wilde got together on this one. And it's not the first time. They've worked together before, but I I can't remember on what. I'm a horror guy, strictly, uh, for the most part. I don't know if you can call this one a horror. It's uh, definitely a thriller. Uh, Definitely some mind bendy stuff going on, but um, to somebody, this would be horrific. So it's here. It's for the strange and unusual. And by God, this podcast is for the strange and unusual. Uh, You know, I think one of these days people are going to start listening to Florence Pugh. Uh, You you saw how Midsummer ended up with a man getting his ass lit up on fire. You know, surrounded by a bunch of other dudes with their asses on fire. If only they'd listen to Florence. Well, we'll save the rest of the spoilers for this one for a little bit later. But since I just spoiled Midsummer, you know, Florence Pugh, by the end of it, um, she's going to have a resume of films about people just not believing anything she says. I think the children call this gaslighting. Don't you hate when generations learn a new word and then just overuse the hell out of it at least this one doesn't look like midsummer even though midsummer was a beautiful movie Uh, a lot of really good landscape a lot of popping colors Uh, this one looks more like mad men mixed with the stedford wives Uh, can't think of maybe another third film that could put a holy trinity together but yeah the entire cast either they were unbelievably good looking or sophomorically funny guys I guess that's why they cast Harry Styles. Like, listen, I'm a heterosexual male, and I'm not above seeing a man and saying, you know what? 
That's a handsome devil right there. He could be on TV. But Harry Styles might be the most plain-looking guy that women are just bonkers over. Regardless, the original cast had Shia LaBudhead in it, and I mean, I, I guess in the same role. And I would rather have Styles with his, you know, vanilla acting chops. Doesn't bother me a bit. But here comes the spoilers, so beware. Uh, the big reveal is basically an iteration of Shyamalan's The Village. You got a bunch of folks from modern day America who've gotten together to build this utopia set in the 50s. Because let's face it, the style was immaculate, the cars were immaculate. Uh, but don't worry, darling, is the village with yuppies instead of pioneer type villagers. They say it's just a better way. Uh, Chris Pine is the leader of this band of no gooders. And let me tell you, he's the man for this role. I recently heard that Chris Pine had been making a career on, you know, basically resting on his laurels of, uh, you know, the Star Trek reboot. Uh, no says I. Chris Pine oozed, completely oozed with nefarious, svelte deviousness. His wife in the film uh, was played by uh, Gemma Chan. I'm a fan of this gal from uh, when I saw her in the IT crowd. I said I was mostly horror. Mostly. I like my good comedy sometimes, too. And the IT crowd's right up there for me. Uh, Olivia Wilde did help her out, you know, help out her own cause. Uh, because, you know, like my good friend uh, Brandon Bassam said in a previous clip here on the Slasher Sports Cinema, if you want a job done right, you got to do it yourself. Uh, it wasn't that extreme with Olivia, but she does have a big role as the, the girl next door's uh, or, or the, the, the girl next door, best friend, and her name's Bunny. Bunny. I'll be goddamned. A surprise not to see a, a kitty or Babs or Dot in the neighborhood, but Bunny or Olivia had uh, some motive of her own. And it's really one we can all relate to uh, in some form. But let's jump back to Florence Pugh for a bit. Uh, that there's a positive and a negative, at least from my perspective, when it comes to her, I guess, unraveling sequence. Uh, some of the scenes were great. There's the, the window cleaning scene where the, the walls and windows close in on her. Um, th that one's visible in the trailer. Uh, she wraps her face in saran wrap at one point. I think that's in one of the trailers, maybe not the original one. But then there's the mental or psychological part of the dilemma. And this was this is done with various vignettes of dancers and eyeballs and retinas. Uh, if we'd gotten less of that and more of the real world stuff, I think this movie hits a little bit harder for me. But just like in Shyamalan's The Village, uh, the, the community built by Pine and Company is about making the ideal living conditions, mostly for the men, but also for Olivia Wilde's character, Bunny. It feels like this is a commentary on breaking away from the patriarchy, from the man's world, if you will. But they do avoid that a little bit, make it not so obvious, because Bunny spills her reasons for wanting to be there and actually wanting to stay. Even when it's time to escape, she says, no, you go. I want this. Uh, but visually, this movie's a home run. Uh, I love the style, the cars, uh, the gentlemen wore the hell out of those suits and the ladies looked as only they can look. Florence Pugh forever a hammer. Uh, it wasn't easy following the writing during some of the erratic times, but overall I was never at a point where I wanted to look away. The climax was a fun ride. Uh, the ending left me wanting more and ultimately it was a time well spent. At the movies. Don't worry, darling. It's three and a half, three and a half slashes out of five. Make sure you find my podcast every week, Slasher Sports Cinema, um, as well as the other podcasts on the Slasher Sports Network, Slasher You and Suki's Honeydew Project. If you don't mind, ratings are important. So depending on where you're watching, you're listening, uh, a thumbs up or a five star rating would be appreciated. So until next time, I'm Billy Graves, and I wish you all to drink the blood of your enemies from the skulls of their children.